Welcome to iLecture Online and now we're going to take a closer look at the Stefan Boltzmann's law and that concept where the amount of radiation per unit time or the luminosity of a star, dqdt, is proportional to the surface area of the star and temperature to the fourth power. What does that tell us? What, can, what kind of information can it give us? And it turns out it's an, it will enable us to figure out how big stars are. Let me show you why. Let's say we have two stars, they're both the same size, but they're a different temperature. Now we know in real life that's not going to be the case, but let's say for the sake of argument, it was. So we have a red star at 3000 Kelvin on the surface temperature, and a yellow star that has a surface temperature of 6000 degrees. And I don't have a yellow pen, so this represents a yellow star. If they're the same size, you can then say that the luminosity of the hotter star will be since the hotter star is twice as hot as the colder or the cooler star, I shouldn't say cold star because 3000 degrees is still very hot, but if the ratio of the temperature is 2, I take 2 to the 4th power because that's what it says right here, the proportionality is temperature to the 4th power, so if it's twice as hot, I take 2 to the 4th power, that means I would expect the yellow star, the hotter star, to put out 16 times as much radiation or 16 times the luminosity of the red star. But what if we understand that the yellow star will be bigger and we want to know how much bigger. Well, let's say that in our example, the yellow star actually is 48 times as bright as the red star. So only 16 times as bright can be accounted for for the extra temperature. That means if it's even brighter than that, it must also be bigger. And the question is how much bigger? Well, we can see then that the increase in luminosity due to the increase in size would be three times, right? So the, if we then take 48, and divided by 16, that is three times as bright due to the size of the star. So now we can say that the, because of that, the area of the yellow star is equal to three times the area or the surface area of the red star. Since it's three times as bright than I would expect it to be if they were the same size, right? So now since we know that the area is three times the size, the surface area, then the red star, we can then say, well, since the area is 4 pi r squared, and so we can then say that 4 pi r squared of the yellow star is equal to 3 times 4 pi r squared of the red star, right? So simply replacing the area by what the surface area of a sphere is equal to. Then cancel out the 4 pi on both sides, and then if I want to find a the radius of the yellow star, I can then say that the radius of the yellow star is therefore equal to the square root of 3 times the radius of the red star. And that because I took the square root of both sides, that means that the squares disappear and I get the square root of the 3. And of course the square root of 3 is about 1.72, so that means that's equal to 1.72 times the radius of the red star. Now, this may not be the actual proportionality, but at least it shows you what methodology they use. So now they realize that if they knew the temperature of the stars, they can then measure the luminosity of the two stars, and then if the two stars were different in luminosity, other than would be explained by the difference in temperature, which is simply a t to the fourth ratio, then they knew that the remaining increase was due to the area the size of the star. And so then if they said, well, the increase of the area must be that many times, the, the, or I should say the, the area must be that many times bigger than the area of the other star because all we do is take the actual luminosity difference divided by the luminosity difference accounted for by the temperature and we get the luminosity difference due to the area. We take the square root of both sides and now we know how much bigger the yellow star is compared to the red star. Great stuff. One big problem. How do we know the actual luminosity of the stars? If we don't know how far the stars are. Because we look at two stars, we don't know how far they are. One appears a lot brighter than the other, but it could be because it's a lot closer, hmm, not because it's bigger. So this, the problem still came in. Even though they understood Wien's law, they now understood Boltzmann's law, they saw how the Boltzmann's law can, can theoretically give them the size of the star. They still couldn't apply this equation if they didn't know how far it was to the stars. But some very intelligent, very smart astronomers came along and go, I think we can figure out how to do that if we could just know how far the stars were. Hmm, maybe you already know where I'm going with this. But if you're interested, stay tuned. It's coming up in several more videos.